Good morning one and all this is Parthwani and I'm Raksha Prakash as a host for Connect TV news bulletin Before we move on to the stories let's see what made to the headlines this week Ukrainian born model wins Miss Japan 2024 sparks identity controversy India soon to export Brahmos supersonic cruise missile system Ex Bihar chief minister Karpuri Thakur awarded Bharat Ratna posthumously Finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman takes part in pre budget halwa ceremony Ayodhya Ram Mandir got inaugurated on the 22nd of Jan Rahul Gandhi led Bharat Jodo Nyay Yatra started on 14th of January from Manipur. Now let's move on to stories. MIT WPU recently conducted its 13th Bharatiya Chhatra Sansar. It is a national platform to encourage student leadership who are politically and socially active to come and share their views on different social topics to be addressed. Let's hear from our reporters to the details of the event. Today we are here at Bharatiya Chhatra Sansar 13th edition. It is a prestigious annual event conducted by MIT with politicians and leaders like Chirag Paswan, Mr. M K Naidu, Shahzad Punawala from across the nation unite together with a common purpose that is to shape the future of India. It is not just a discussion platform but also a platform where students can ask their question for better ideas. BCS helps us to be the leader and to be the policy makers. these days the youth they themselves they know what is good for their future but then yes as the future of this country i would want more number of youth uh, to join indian politics it is it's important for the new ideas uh, to come into the political sphere of our country and i hope and i wish because india is a young country and i would want to see a young parliament soon uh, so yes my wish is that that more youngsters should join politics Students showed great enthusiasm and participation of today's event at BCS. This is Darshita Rohra from Connect TV, Department of Media and Com, with camera person Samjana Thapa. Hello and welcome to Connect TV by Department of Media and Com. Today we are here at day two of Bharatiya Chhatra Sansar, where leaders like Dr. Vikram Sampath, Manoj Muntashir, Swami Mukundanand, and Bhavya Vishnoi. across the nation come together united by a common purpose to shape the future of india they shared their views and ideas of different topics of concern to students for critically analyzing the current situation of our country students showed great enthusiasm in today's session this is muskan khan from connect tv department of media and com with camera person anirudh <laughs> Media and Communication Department had a national immersion program where students from 3rd year BA were taken to Amrita University to learn and gain new experiences. Here is Shruti with the details of the program. Students of 3rd year visited Amrita Vishwavidyapitha Mysore campus for their national academic immersion program. The NIIP was held from 19th to 29th December. The program started with a ice breaking session where students performed different activities with the faculties of Amrita. The first session was held on shuttlecraft, a journey to photography excellency, where students performed practicals on different aspects of photography. The second session was held on codecraft, mastering the art of web design and development. Students had hands-on experience of web designing. The students thoroughly enjoyed this session. The next session was on frame by frame brilliance where students learned different camera techniques for film making the session was followed by script to screen where scri- scripting for the film making was learned by students the other was mobile film making where students learned the excellence and techniques of mobile film making the last session was held on at the advertising thing students performed different arts for various advertisements a cultural program was held for the cultural exchange between mysuru and pune students of department of media and communication performed for this cultural exchange students 
thoroughly enjoyed their stay at the Mysuru campus. Along with camera person Sanjana, I am Shruti reporting for Connect TV. Students from second year MA were taken to Bennett University, Noida. Here is Tanisha with the details. Hello viewers, welcome to Connect TV, the Department of Media and Com. The National Immersion Program, a collaborative venture between Department of Media and Communication, MIT WPU, and the Times School of Media, Bennett University, Greater Noida, witnessed an extraordinary fusion of creativity, innovation, and industry relevance held from 15 December to 28 December 2023. Focused on TV production, mobile journalism, podcast and advertisements, this program aimed to provide students with real-world, hands-on experience, bridging the gap between academia and industry demands. As a part of 14 days program, the students created four podcasts within two days on various topics such as mental health, challenges in media industry, exploring the unexplored parts of Northeast, and Exchange Diaries, the NAIP podcast. Students also got an opportunity to produce the live talk shows and they came up with two different talk show themes, Dating Ke Drame and Voice of Malu. Students' creativity was unleashed through various advertisement projects. They made interesting ads, jingles for various existing brands and visited Times Now and Radio Mirchi offices as a part of their industry visit. On the concluding day of NAIP, students were felicitated with certificates by Professor Sanjeev Singh, the Dean of Times School, all the Bennett faculty congratulated MIT students and appreciated the projects created during the program. Dr. Gunjan Sharma, Assistant Professor, Times School, Bennett University, and Dr. Mithila Banniwale, Assistant Professor, Department of Media and Com, MIT WPU, worked as the NAIP coordinators for their respective universities. Along with camera person Samjana, this is Tanisha Kundain reporting for Connect TV, Department of Media and Com. Department of Media and Communication signed MOU with Sakal Media Group. Actually, this is a really great to sign the MOU with uh, MIT WP, Department of uh, Mass Communication and Journalism, right? Uh, and Saka Media Group has a larger uh, spectrum of activities and uh, I will say it's not only a newspaper, but also digital, print, uh, television, events. So it's a totally impact uh, group what we are making in the society. And that's why this uh, the student, MIT WP student, will definitely get benefited to the practical wisdom from our uh, employees or even internship and uh, whatsoever the knowledge we can exchange with each other. We will also learn in this process. So I'm very happy to sign the MA with the MIT WPO today. This year, 64 countries are having elections. Let us have a detailed look into this year's political scenarios all over the world with Aniket. Thank you, Raksha. Well, 2024 is the global year of elections, isn't it? 2024 is all set to be a historic year in terms of global political scenario. More than 60 countries across the planet are scheduled to go under elections. It is expected that about half of the world population will be voting in their respective nations. The list of such nations include big names like USA, the European Union, South Africa, Iran, Pakistan, Russia, and of course, India. To start, let's look at the elephant in the room, the United States of America. The USA is scheduled to undergo presidential elections in November 2024. Many are expecting a matchup of incumbent president Joe Biden of Democratic Party and his predecessor Donald Trump of Republican Party for the presidential term. Many are fearing an impulsive Trump coming back to rule the biggest economy of the world. Now let's look at the elections in Russia. Russia will be undergoing elections mid-March. These elections are expected to hand incumbent president Vladimir Putin his fifth term. This will be the first election in Russia after the famous 2020 constitutional amendments which effectively allow Putin to stay in power at least till 2036. This is expected to be good for India as under Putin Moscow and New Delhi have shown great affinity for each other. Now let's move on to South Africa. India's fellow BRICS member, South Africa, is also scheduled to go through elections in this year, although the dates are not fixed yet. The opinion polls predict another victory for incumbent President Cyril Ramaphosa's African National Congress. 
Ramaphosa has largely supported India's interests historically. Moving ahead, Iran is scheduled to pass through legislative polls in March this year. It is worth noting that these elections will be the first elections in Iran after the famous anti-government mass protests by the public after the death of Mahsa Amini in 2022. Let's look at India's eastern neighbor, Bangladesh. Bangladesh went through elections on 7th January 2024 with the incumbent Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina winning another term. While many are calling the elections rigged, others argue that the elections were conducted in accordance with the constitution. Now let us move on to the western neighbours, Pakistan. Pakistan is scheduled to have elections in the month of February. The political scenario in Pakistan has historically been very unstable. In over 76 years of independence, Pakistan has not seen a single Prime Minister complete his term. In 2018 elections, Imran Khan was elected as the Prime Minister, but he, he was removed in 2022 after the passing of no confidence motion against him. Now let's take a look at Indonesia. The Southeast Asian nation is also scheduled to go through elections this year. Indonesia is an important strategic part partner for India due to its location and for a lot of similarities in the Indian and Indonesian cultures. Joko Widodo is the current president of the nation but is not part of the presidential race. Hence, the nation will be undergoing political transition and we will have to wait to see how that affects India. Let us now have a glimpse at the elections in Taiwan. While the China might not have elections this year, its neighbour Taiwan went through presidential elections on 13th January. Lai Ching Te replaced Tsai Ing Wen as the president of the small island nation. These elections come in the backdrop of China threatening to invade the nation any moment. Whether or not China attacks Taiwan might affect India's future plan against China. Last but not the least, India too will be undergoing general elections starting April. The signs show that the incumbent Prime Minister Narendra Modi of Bharatiya Janata Party might win his third successive term. This can be backed by the fact that BJP conquered landslide victories in three of the five recently contested states. In two of these states, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, they removed the Indian National Congress from power. With the consecration of long-promised Sri Ram Temple in Ayodhya, BJP under PM Modi has given itself a massive opportunity to earn the votes of Hindu community, which forms the majority of Indian population. Removal of Article 370, reorganization of Jammu Kashmir, organization of G20 summit and many such important issues happened in the Modi's second governance. In this background, it will be interesting to see if PM Modi stays in power. This is Aniket with camera person Shubhadeep reporting for Connect TV, Department of Media and Communication. India's 75th Republic Day celebrated with great enthusiasm at MIT WPU, where Lieutenant General Dr. Narendra Kotwal was the chief guest. Nehru Club organized a debate competition on occasion of Republic Day. Mayank Sharma secured the first position along with Aryan Kelkar being the runner up. With a Visa and MasterCard, the common man in India was standing in queue. And concept of Republic is far beyond any sort of party. It is far beyond right or left. Sports Club of Department of Media and Communication has organized an annual sports gathering to showcase the athletic progress and sportsmanship of our talented students. This was all for the bulletin. I, Raksha Prakash, with Parthwani, signing off for Connect TV, Department of Media and Com.